Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we're starting a new topic, which is the halogenoalkanes. We are starting the topic of halogenoalkanes. You must have figured out that we are going to be talking about halogen atoms attached to the organic compound. Reminding you guys that halogens are group 7. So halogens are present in group, you can say 7A or group 17. These are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and astatine. We generally talk about the like the three halogens in the middle chlorine bromine iodine all these are highly electronegative atoms by the way they're highly electronegative atoms now what is electronegativity electronegativity is the tendency of an atom tendency of an atom to attract electron pairs towards itself so chlorine bromine iodine or generally halogens try to attract the electron pair towards themselves imagine there's a bond between a carbon and a chlorine atom imagine this is the uh, molecule this is what it looks like and there are these three hydrogen atoms also attached to it so apparently this is chloromethane this is chloromethane molecule you know there are electron pairs between carbon hydrogen and electron pair between carbon chlorine. These are the hydrogens on the left and chlorine is towards the right. These are the lone pairs of our chlorine atom. Now since chlorine is highly electronegative, it will attract this electron pair. This is the electron bond pair. Chlorine will attract this electron bond pair towards itself. So as a result, the electron density will be distorted like this. That chlorine atom will gain most of the electron density towards itself. And as a result, the molecule will become polar. The electron pair would be more towards the chlorine atom. And that is why you will see a partial negative charge on chlorine and partially positive charge on carbon these molecule is polar and that is why whenever we are writing we write it like this that the halogen atom X is the halogen atom has partial negative charge and carbon has the partial positive charge now by the way X could be chlorine bromine iodine coming back to the idea of halogenoalkanes we know the halogen atom is attached through a covalent bond which is polar in nature because of the electronegativity of the halogen atom and because of this electronegativity what you'll see is they do a very common kind of reaction that we'll talk as substitution reaction substitution reaction What happens in the substitution reaction is the halogen wants to let go of the halogen or alkene molecule. Halogen atom wants to leave. And when halogen atom wants to leave, some other chemical species replaces halogen. So in the substitution reaction, a chemical species, which could be an atom, or a group a chemical species an atom or a group is replaced by another chemical species so what happens is that imagine you have your carbon atom which is bonded to three hydrogens and your one apparently bromine atom Bromine is partially negative, we know. Carbon is partially positive, we know. Now, only groups which are attracted to carbon and which can replace bromine are the ones which are negative themselves. 
because only <clears throat> because only a negative group can be attracted to carbon so a negative group would look like this and would try to make a bond with the carbon while the halogen is leaving so halogen atom wants to leave and a good negative atom or a compound a negative overall negative particle will make a bond with carbon and it would replace halogen atom what do we call such groups these groups or these atoms with a negative charge on them are known as nucleophiles they are known as nucleophiles what is the definition of a nucleophile they are electron they are electron rich species they have electron so they are negative in nature so they are electron rich species that can donate lone pairs so they are electron rich species which can donate lone pairs and obviously they can replace the halogen atom good examples of nucleophiles can be good examples can be OH group like this or the amide group where the nitrogen has the lone pair or it could be the cyanide like this so hydroxide is a good nucleophile amide ion is a good nucleophile and cyanide or you can say nitrile is a good nucleophile coming back to the concept of the substitution reaction we know that halogen atom is replaced by a nucleophile so the proper name of this reaction will be known as nucleophilic substitution we will call it nucleo Philic substitution in a nucleophilic substitution the halogen atom the halogen atom is replaced by a nucleophile beginning from the idea that the bond was between apparently bromine the electron pair is here the carbon and let's say these are our hydrogen atoms so there are three hydrogen atoms and the electron pairs the bond pairs are here and then we have one over here with the bromine the bromine atom is partially negative the carbon atom is partially positive if the bromine atom leaves the molecule it looks something like this that they want to leave if it is leaving if the halogen atom leaves you can see there is no electron left with the carbon the bromine actually took away carbon's electron also that is a kind of heterolytic bond fission the halogen atom the halogen atom breaks the carbon halogen bond remember the halogen atom is breaking the carbon halogen bond in a heterolytic manner in a hetero heterolytic manner which means it means that carbon gets no electron and halogen atom gets both electrons so our carbon will become partially positive you can see I'm putting a positive charge on it such a kind of positively charged organic molecule is known as carbocation we also call it the carbonium ion by the way but the most common term is carbocation what actually happened here was the carbon halogen bond I am drawing the, the hydrogens also but the carbon halogen bond was already polar and it broke into 
a heterolytic manner. You can see from the center of the bond I'm making the arrow towards the halogen and that can make our carbocation. Now, on the basis of carbocation stability, whether the carbocation is stable or not, we have two possibilities. So we will talk about the mechanism, we'll talk about the substitution nucleophilic mechanism. The S stands for substitution, the S is equals to substitution, S is equals to substitution and N is equals to nucleophilic. So in the substitution nucleophilic mechanism, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is stable carbocation, stable carbocation and the another possibility is unstable, unstable carbocation, unstable carbocation. So what defines the stability of carbocation? How do we know whether the carbocation will be made that that's that's being made would be stable or unstable? It is defined by the positive inductive effect. Let me draw two different kinds of halogenoalkanes. One halogenoalkane I am drawing as a stable one is highly branched. It's a highly branched halogenoalkane and on the left, on sorry, on the right I'm drawing a very unbranched halogenoalkane with only one alkyl group or you can say only one carbon chain towards the left hand side. You can see there are three alkyl groups attached to the carbon which has halogen on it. I'm highlighting the halogen with orange. But on the other hand, the carbon that has halogen is attached to only one methyl group from the left hand side and there is no other methyl or any alkyl group around it. So these kinds of branches help us categorize halogenoalkanes. What you see on the right hand side is known as the primary halogenoalkane. We call it the primary halogenoalkane and on the left you can see a tertiary halogenoalkane. On the left you can see a tertiary halogenoalkane. Let's define it. A primary halogenoalkane, in the primary halogenoalkane, the carbon atom, the carbon atom attached to halogen atom, the carbon atom which is attached to halogen atom has only one alkyl group attached to it has only one alkyl group attached to it so the carbon atom which is attached to the halogen atom has only one alkyl group attached to it that is primary halogenoalkane in the tertiary halogenoalkane carbon atom attached to halogen atom, the carbon atom which is attached to halogen atom has three alkyl groups, has three alkyl groups attached to it. So in a primary halogen alkane, the carbon atom has only one alkyl group attached to it and in the tertiary halogen alkane there are three alkyl groups attached to the carbon obviously the carbon which has halogen on it we can obviously predict what a secondary halogen alkane would look, look, would look like because between the primary and tertiary there has to be something called secondary so a secondary halogen alkane would be a carbon which has halogen on it but it has two methyl groups or two alkyl groups around it. So it has not one or three, it has two alkyl groups attached to it. 
and it would look like this the carbon the halogen and two alkyl groups so in primary there is one alkyl group in secondary there is two alkyl groups and in the tertiary there is three alkyl groups attached to the carbon which has halogen on it on the basis of this we know that the tertiary halogenoalkane the one on the left hand side can have a lot of positive inductive effect now if you remember the video on alkenes you would know that when a carbon becomes positive there are electron donor effects from the nearby methyl groups so the nearby methyl groups can have electron donor effect to the carbon in the middle so even if halogen leaves even if someday halogen leaves and the carbon becomes positive it will be able to make a stable positive carbocation even if it becomes positive it would become stable because of the positive inductive effect it has a very high positive inductive effect so this carbocation in the middle would be formed very stable you can see this carbocation which is in purple right now would be stable because of the positive inductive effect but now if you notice here in the primary if the halogen atom wants to leave there is only one methyl group so it has less positive it has less positive inductive effect that is why it can't make stable carbocations so in today's video we have concluded so far that there are two kinds of carbocations one is stable formed by the tertiary halogenoalkanes because of the three alkyl groups another is unstable carbocation formed generally by the primary halogenoalkane because there is only one methyl group